Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Joe, and I'm very happy to uh, once again be able to share with everybody um, the uh, Lotus Sutra review. And as all of you know, that um, this week we are still uh, um, um, asking in the, um, the wondrous Lotus Sutra that was all the way from chapter one. Uh, we're still reviewing um, the, the chapter one in the everyday Xun Ba Xiang as Master is still recovering. And uh, I'm happy to tell everybody that uh, just yesterday that uh, Master once again mentioned that hearing all the progress and all the wonderful things that our volunteers have been doing is tremendous, it's giving her tremendous energy and also giving her tremendous um, strength to be able to speak more and talk more. And um, it's, it's actually something that, um, that saddens us that um, what we are encountering today in today's world and all the afflictions that we ourselves are experiencing are the very reasons why uh, that, that master, I believe, that master is actually um, is not feeling so well. And, and it's because of the uh, overwhelming, it, it's because of the overwhelming um, feeling, the overwhelming um, worriedness of how the world is going. So I think the one, the one thing that we can do to help master is that we should really uh, work hard to rid of, rid of the afflictions. And I think that's something that we should try to do um, very much uh, for ourselves and also for, um, for Master as well. So today we're gonna go into the review and um, it's more be like last week format where we are trying to answer some questions and also to elaborate a little bit more. So last week we talked about getting to know Buddha and Master in a way to try to answer some questions. For example, like um, how can the Buddha actually know, uh, be at the same wavelength of the universe? How is it possible that, um, uh, that, that the Buddha can be able to sort of be in sync with the universe, the whole thing, that big, you know? And, and, and how is it possible? Is it medication? Is it, is it still thought? What, what, what is it? And we talked about how to get to know Buddha or how to get to know Master. And, and so we talked about, Master once told us, that we must walk gently, we must tread gently for every step that we take is actually something that's stepping on our mother earth and it's hurting our mother earth. And I talked about, and we, and we talked about how master was able to um, feel that. And that's essentially empathetic, empathy, to feel for another, to feel for how would earth feel, right? So first is to know that earth would feel it. Second is for us to feel how the earth would feel. So the first part, to know that the earth has feeling or to know that the other animal, the other people have feeling, okay? That's just knowledge. That's just understanding of nature. For everything that you do, there's a reaction. That's just the understanding. However, how do we turn that knowledge into wisdom is um, know that they have these feelings and how do we take into account of how those feelings will affect us and how our actions will affect the, all these other, um, all these other uh, uh, entities around us. So knowing that each of these entities have feelings is not enough, but also to feel what they feel is turning the, the knowledge into wisdom to feel how they feel rather than just to know that they feel is the next step that we need to take. And that's what the question was asking about, I believe, is that, you know, how would the Buddha be in sync, the same wavelength as the universe? Well, if you open your heart and open your mind and know that its existence is out there, but also to try to feel how it would feel. And I think that would be very, that would be very much in sync. However, I'm only speaking from what I think I know, but the whole thing is really much greater than what I, what I can even think. So, so that's why Master always tell us to use our eyes to listen and use our ears to see and how they work. And that's what 
it means to turn knowledge into wisdom. And that's what we talked about last week. You know, it's, it's really difficult to, to just know that how would, you know, to, to even know that does earth feel, does the earth feel our every step? To know that, knowing that, and then what do we do about it? Is to feel how the earth would feel if the earth can feel every step. So that's what it means to turn consciousness or turn knowledge into wisdom. Turning something that you know into something that can be, can be um, derived further and deeper, and that's called wisdom. So I, I, I gave the example of getting old. You know, you can tell me all you want about, uh, you can tell me all the things that you experience when you're getting old. But if I don't get old on my own and feel that on my own, I would only know these things in terms of words. But now that I'm feeling it myself too, then from there, can I get a little bit deeper? What do I do about it when I'm getting old? What can I do about this? And what am I going to do about this? And, and that's the part about turning knowledge into wisdom. Turning something that we all know into something that, that's even more in depth. Feel how the people feel as you feel deeper and think about what I can do for them. So, and that's why the question came um, last week. It talks about words. It talks about the teachings are beyond words. So is it words or is it not words? Should we believe the words or should we not believe the words? And the idea is um, what, what, you know, what, should we, what should we believe? Should we trust what the Buddha said or to experience the true nature, the, na the, the Dharma at its core? So what should we do? And, and the idea is that, the, 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 the idea is that, yes, it's just like getting old, right? You can tell me all the words to describe a particular, particular idea. You can describe the scent, the scent of a rose. You can describe it in as many words as you wish, but it will be different when I first, when I smell the rose for the very first time. You can fill the entire book with how the sunlight, the sunshine after a stormy night, after a stormy night feels like, or how does the, the sun shine, shine onto your skin and face, how it feels like after a stormy night. So you can fill the entire book, a novel talking about it, but it does not help you in actually experience it. So you have to experience it firsthand. And therefore, but, but what is important is that the words that the Buddha said, the words and all these books and all these novels and the books prepare you to understand what it feels like. You still need to walk it yourself, but all the words, it's almost like the Buddha opening the door to you and show you there is a path, but you must walk through it yourself to experience it for yourself, to grow for yourself. And therefore, the words do not mean the Dharma itself, but it merely opens the door. It opens something for you to walk through. It, it gives you the guideline. It tells you the things that you might see when you walk on the path. It makes you prepare for what you might encounter. And that's what the words are supposed to do. It's not the only thing. And by all means, that's not the end of all the Dharma. The end of all the Dharma, or the, there's no ending, but to, it's the, it's the path itself for you to be able to walk on it, and that's the most important thing. So once again, it's to, it's to turn something that you know, something that you can sort of put it into words. And, and how do you turn the, those words into something that you can actually do about, something that's wise, something that has wisdom, something that benefits the world, something that transcends you onto the next level. So this week, we're getting to know more about Buddha and the Master. Why? Because, and I think this is really in sync with um, today's Xun Fa Xiang. There's a, uh, the rerun from, I, I think, years ago when we're still back in chapter one. And Master talks about um, the Bodhisattva Maitreya. He had no question. He understood that the light coming from between the brows of, of the Buddha, he knew what it meant. He knew the reason why the Buddha entered into meditation after and enter into samadhi. He knew the reason why, but he still raised the question to ask. And that was the reason. And that was, you know, in sync with what we're going to talk about today. Because in order for us to get to know Buddha and Master, we must have questions. We must have doubt. 
Why is it this and how is it that? So with these questions, then through the answer or through the journey of finding the answer is how we can truly walk the path. Instead of somebody just telling you how it is, we can actually try to feel the answer and try to understand the answer ourselves. So today we're gonna do the same thing that what we did last time is to focus on some of the questions and maybe from there we will be able to see more about more beyond the questions themselves. So first question, um, one, of the, one of the questions for, for this week says, um, there are so many, there are so many sutras in Buddhism, what are they talking about? And this is a good question because after all, so far in, in our review, we have only been talking about the Lotus Sutra and the Sutra of Infinite Meanings. We haven't talked about many other things. Yes, we probably also talk about the, the, the medicine, uh, the, um, the medicine king, uh, the sutra, or um, there are some of the sutra that we always, always, always mention. However, um, what are all these sutras talking about? And I think this is a very fair question. So this is the picture that I sort of wanted to envision, you know, how, what it means, what it means to be cultivation. So at the bottom center, at the bottom center, you see the back of the Buddha, okay, the back of the Buddha. He's looking back. He's looking back at all of us. It's almost like he's walking towards you, okay? You're looking at the picture. He's walking toward you. But now he turns around and look at all the people that supposedly are following the teachings of the Buddha. So all, he's looking back at all the path, all the path that all the people are following, okay, the following. So there are people coming from point A and there are people stuck in point B and there are people coming from far away from point C. Now, all point A, B, C, all are coming from different points. A is coming from, from our perspective, our left. It's coming from the winding path. Path C is coming from a different hill, has to go up and down and then come to another winding path. And part B is stuck in a loop. So now, in order to help A, B, and C get to where Buddha is, Buddha must tell A, B, and C different ways to get out of their troubles and tell them the direction to get to where Buddha is now. Therefore, whatever Buddha tells A will be very different from what Buddha tells B and what Buddha tells C. And therefore, the, all these teachings all these teachings are going to be different from A to B to C. Now, what are the teachings of the Buddha? The teachings of the Buddha in words are collectively called the Dharma. The Dharma is something that's more um, abstract. It's the teaching. All the teaching, whether it's spoken or non-spoken, whether it's something that you feel or something that you can sense or something that you hear, see, etc. Those are all teachings. However, the sutras, the sutras are only the words that were spoken by the Buddha and that was collected and that was um, organized and collected into these sutras or the books or the collection of the teachings that were spoken. So in order for A to get to the Buddha, where the Buddha is right now, there, is, there are spoken words between the Buddha and those people at A and said, you must do this. Eventually, Ananda and all the disciples come together and say, oh, let's put that teaching as a sutra. The teaching that the Buddha gave to be is very similar, but it's the different. And therefore, that's collected into a different sutra. And the same thing for C. So we can tell that. So we can tell that this is exactly why there are so many sutras because there are so many different um, situations, many different situations where uh, there are differences in what the people need. That's why there are so many sutras, except even though there are infinite dharma, but the Buddha didn't have infinite time. And even if Buddha had infinite time, we would not have infinite resource to write down all the infinite words. And therefore, the sutras are limited. And therefore, we think that that's all there is, but the sutra but the teaching itself is actually infinite. So hopefully that will answer the question 
there are so many sutras in Buddhism, what are they talking about? Well, they're always, always only talking about one thing, is how do you get from over there to where the Buddha is? And that's it. Different people experience different things, and different people have different obstacles. And that is why, and that is why um, there are going to be different sutras. So different sutras address different problems that people face at the time. And the Buddha will give us the teachings to address these problems. Okay, so that's, that's why there are the different sutras. Okay, so, but the idea is, even though that there are all these different teachings, can the people at point A or point B or point C, can they really all hear what the Buddha says? Can they already heed to the teachings? Can they really follow the teachings? Can they hear and understand the teachings? Can they really understand? And that goes into the next question. So there is the verse from chapter one, which we uh, recently just been talking about. It talks about, it talks about the, the light, the, the, the light, the, the, the ray that comes from between the eyebrow, okay, of the Buddha. It goes to illuminate 18,000 18, worlds. Okay, um, 18,000 worlds to the east, okay, and reaching far below to the deepest part of the hell and also the highest part of the heaven, okay? So you can see all, all the six destinies in these lands, okay? So the question is, we heard about all of that living in all these destinies, seeing the rate of light, giving rise to the joy and everyone could be able and wondering that all these wonderful things and here but can all really come to the Saha world to hear, including those in the hell? Can they all really come to hear, uh, can they come to this world and hear the message? And also, likewise, on the opposite extreme, the heavenly beings are so immersed in enjoyment, could they really want to come to the, you know, transcend the heavenly enjoyment and then be able to be willing to hear and listen to the Dharma, okay? So that's what the question is. You know, we can see and read from the sutra that the light ray goes through all these worlds, high above in the, in the heavens and low below in the, the hell, and trying to reach out to all the worlds, okay? But can they really hear? And are they really willing to listen, okay? So this is the question. Can all really come to the Saha world to hear, including those from the hell, the deepest part of the hell. And I can only share with you, yes, and how. We see this every day. This is, this is, after the earthquake in Mexico, people are gathered around. They have only suffered the greatest earthquake in 30 years, and they have lost everything. They don't know where their food is coming from. No one is coming to help them. The government pretty much gave up on them. So what are they going to do? So rather, they gather he, there. They are in the deepest part of the hell. They are suffering in ways that they never suffered before. And then Siji showed up and tell them there is a way. Yes, you are suffering, but there is a way. Trust us. You can do this. Transcend. You can do this to help people. This is in Africa. Once again, this, if there is a hell on earth, that's probably it. Africa. Not because of war, not because of politics, it's just bad. It's just hell, right? It's not because of civil war. It's not because of any other reason. It's just because this continent, it's just horrible, right? But can they really, are these people that we all know suffer greatly, greatly in their livelihood, in their entire life, and there are volunteers who are suffering both in their body, both in their health, and also in their wealth, can they actually listen to the teachings? Can the ray actually reach to all of them? And the answer is absolutely yes. Because, like in this case, like in this case, in Mozambique, that's exactly what we are seeing. That these volunteers are exactly hearing the teachings. They are coming, they are staying in Mozambique, but their hearts have already transformed from in hell into the realm where they can listen to the teachings. Once again, this is, <coughs> this is the orientation. This is the orientation in Africa. 
you see that the teachings of the master, you see that the teaching from the master is already brought there. It's brought there to this place. And at that moment, all the people sitting in this tent, makeshift tent, listening to the teachings, they are not in hell. They are right now cultivating, practice, practicing the Dharma that was preached by the Buddha. So going back to the question, can they really all come to the Saha world and listen? Can these people in hell come to the world and listen to the Dharma, listen to the Dharma and learn? And the answer is absolutely yes. Okay, so the next question, the heavenly beings, they are so immersed in enjoyment of life. Could they too wish to transcend the realm they are in now? And we talked about this two weeks ago. The idea is we must all have faith. The faith in every one of us, including those in heaven and those in hell. We all have the true suchness. We all have the intrinsic Buddha nature. We must have faith that everyone and absolutely everyone can be enlightened, can reach the Buddhahood, can be, um, can be awakened. And that's the faith that we have. Even those in hell and those in heaven, all of them, and I believe it and we should all believe it and that's what the Buddha told us. And that's why there is the seed. We used this picture two weeks ago. The same idea is, yes, there is going to be a time when those, those heavenly beings will eventually get it. And then the sapling will begin to grow. The seed will become a sapling and it will begin to grow. And that's the whole idea about transcend. Transcending what? Transcending time and space. Yes, at this time, in the sutra, at that time is the time when the Buddha's light ray comes out and shines out to all the different worlds. But we are hearing it now. We, 2,500 years later, in the year 2018, in the month of May, we are hearing this very teaching that was taught 2,500 years ago. So it's not then and right there. It's not only at the vulture's peak. It's not only 2,500 years ago. Think, transcending time and space. How did the teaching transcend all the time of 2,500 years ago until me now? And how is the teaching from India transferred to now where I am in Hualien or where you are in Malaysia? So this teaching is timeless and spaceless. It has no restriction of time, has no restriction of space. So the heavenly beings are so immersed in enjoyment in life. Could they too wish to transcend the realm they are in now? And the answer is eventually, just like a seed, when the conditions are ripe, it will grow. Just like right now, 2,500 years later, we are hearing the teaching. Just like this morning, we are hearing the teaching that was coming from maybe five years ago. But five years ago, I heard the same thing. I remember this part, but I didn't feel the same way that I'm feeling now. So how did the teaching from five years ago that Master said appear today? So that's what the teaching is. That's what the Dharma is. It transcends space and transcends time. Five years ago and now, I'm hearing it today and it helps me even right now. So it's all these things. Do not be trapped about all these things are happening at that moment on Vulture's Peak. It happens. It's happening and it will happen all at the same time in the same framework. Okay? So when you're thinking about the light ray coming out, shining to the 18,000 worlds, it's happening right now. It's still happening and it will continue to happen. That is why we are hearing it. That is why you are hearing it. That's why even five years ago, Master talked about it and we're still talking about it today. Okay? So that's what the true transcending is. The seed is ourselves. We are the one that's growing, not the heavenly beings, not the one in the hell. It's just telling you that 
throughout this time and throughout all the different space, the teaching still is happening. Okay. So the next, next question. So it, it follows, it naturally follows the next question. Those disciples that have left Siji, this great path, um, maybe we are thinking that we are thinking about something to do something to inspire them. Is it something that we should do or should we just leave it until their karmic affinity is fully ripened? You know, we talked about, Master talks about that, you know, not every lifetime we have, it has the good affinity. So we must seize the moment, you know? And I think that's absolutely right. We must do everything that we can. We don't give up. We don't give up so easily. And just yesterday, somebody came to, um, uh, there's a group, there's a group that came to Huarian to share with Master. One of the person says, just the night before, the night before that she was supposed to come to Hualien, she got an order to make a cake. Okay, so she's, that's her profession, making cake. But she was actually failing in making the cake. So she called up the person that was organizing the trip here. And she said, you know what? It's already nine o'clock and I don't think, I, I, I must be able, I must finish my order by tomorrow. And I don't think I'll be able to make it because we're leaving the very first thing in the morning. And I don't think I can make it. So the organizer told her that, do you think that um, this opportunity that you're going to so easily let it go to waste, isn't there something that you can do to try to cherish this, this opportunity? And so she think to herself, you know, this is indeed something very important. And I must do everything I can to make sure I keep the schedule of coming to Huaria. And therefore, the moment that she makes the decision that that's going to happen, she get to work on it and she stop all the things. Uh, so, so all the things that used to make her fail still happens, but now she's determined to get through all of that. So she shared with Master. She overcame all those things. So finally at 2 a.m. to finish all her work, she went to rest for a little bit wakes up at about four and get to get ready and take the train to Huarian. That's what happened. And she was so happy. She said she would not have missed it for all this lifetime, but she was willing. She was ready to give up. Why? And all she needed was somebody to tell her not yet. So all this is trying to tell you, all this is trying to say is there are external and internal factors. There are things that's around us that's influencing, giving us impact, you know, influencing on how we think and what we think and determining and, and affecting us on how we, what we are going to do. But there are also internal factors on what we are trying to do. What we are doing can be only providing the external helping and assisting um, factors to help somebody to make the change and do the right thing. But it's still up to the internal factors. Same thing. What other people can do for us is only to help us push in that direction. Whether we want to do this or not is still only up to us. Same thing, for those people that have left, what we can do for them is only to help them, to assist them. It's only still up to themselves to decide whether they wanna do this or not. Same thing, the fact that you want to help others comes from your inside. Whether it succeeds or not, that's the external part. So do you want to do this? It's not based on whether it's going to work or not. It's not going to base on whether you think they are going to come back or not. It's because you believe it's the right thing. So I'm using this from both perspectives, from the person that has left and from somebody who can actually help them. Both this person and you have the external and internal factors for them, we, what we do are just something that we are helping. It's still up to them to feel whether they want to do it or not. For you, whether it works or not, that's the external factor. But you coming from internally still need to decide, is this what you need to do? To provide positive feedback, to provide the positive influence so that other people would be willing to go this path. So please, external and internal factors, they are there and influencing each other, but you should be very careful and you should understand what is influencing your, your idea. So lastly, I want to talk about 
um, the very last minute I want to talk about um, uh, election, election time. So many, many, many people, uh, and I'm sure the whole world was watching the election in Malaysia. And, and not just the election in Malaysia, but the whole world is, is sort of focusing on, on Asia, right? There are many, many, many things happening. Uh, there's the North and South Korea, and there's the Malaysian, and there's always, always, whether you know it or not, but there's always, always the, Thai, the China and the Taiwan problems, okay? So whatever it is, okay, it might be Malaysian election, it might be North Korea and South Korea, it might be Taiwan and China. Anyway, it's the same idea. It's, it's all talking about the current geopolitical happening and, and, and the updates. So in a recent chat group, there was brought up, and there were people that were reminded that these things, that it's best to keep out of the chat group. However, and there are people that start to say that, hey, you know, um, uh, uh, there are um, the, the things that, that they are doing to, um, to, to uh, help the world prior, uh, help the, the, the country prior to the election, right? So there is, um, um, how do we understand? How do we better understand the idea of abstain from being involved in politics and demonstration? So when there is a tug of war, so are we going to watch and fight or are we going to help or are we going to just sit there and watch, right? So once again, this is the idea. What are we going to do, right? So Master deliberately tells us, let's not be involved in politics. And you are thinking there is a tug of war going on, right? There is a part of good and part of evil, and they are struggling. And how can Master just be telling us, no, sit on the fences and wait? How does that work? How does this precept work? It goes against everything Master says, right? Master says we do and not talk, right? And now it's time to do, not talk, right? Politics, you know, it's important. It's going to direct a country into ruin or direct a country into prosperity. How can we not do anything, right? Right? So what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay, let me tell you this, purity or clarity at the origin. I want to show you this picture. This is the picture of the Amazon River flowing from the bottom left. Okay, so the, the high ground is on the upstream, the bottom left. And upper right is the Atlantic Ocean. It flows from lower left to upper right. That's how it flows. Okay, this is a satellite picture and it flows that way. And um, so usually for people to use the water, for people to use the water, they will, they will, um, they are usually living downstream, right? Because upstream is sort of high, usually high in the mountain or, or higher altitude. And usually in the flat ground, that's where people stay. That's where people live and use the water. But the problem is, the problem is, when there is, um, when there is a, you might, uh, you might not be able to see clearly. Yes, you can see. Okay. Oh, so when there is a factory somewhere in upstream or when there is something that where, you know, there's a cattle farm somewhere in the upstream and the midstream, for those people in the downstream, okay, for those people in the downstream, because there are things in the upstream that already polluted the water, the river. Even if you're downstream, the water that you take will be polluted. It will be polluted by the factory wastewater and it will be polluted by all the cattle as well. Even though you know at the source of the mountain, you know at the source of the river, before any of these factory and human waste or cattle waste or all these waste, before all these were factored, at the source, this is very clean. The water is very clean itself. But somehow along the way, this path is already polluted. So you at the downstream, continuing to get the water, you are going to get the polluted water. Even though all the way at the beginning, at the origin, it's clean, it's pure, and it's very clear. 
this is just like politics. Politics at its origin, just like everything at its origin, it's pure. It's very, very clean. It's also very, very, it's something that only has one purpose, is to organize all these people of different background and collectively show their willingness and well-being to help each other and cooperate so we as a group can live together and prosper together. That's what the government is supposed to bring all of us together. So at the core, at the origin, this was a good idea. But along the way, there were factories, there were corruptions, there were all these different, there were all these different ideologies that comes in and try to over influencing each other. So that's just like the factories or the cattle farm along the way in upstream and midstream that's affecting us. So now what we are getting, what we are getting are all polluted, all polluted water. So now what we're seeing is this river coming from upstream, which was all very good intention and very clear and very clean origin. When we are finally getting it here, it's already very dirty. It's already very polluted, just like politics. What we're seeing, it's all darkness. It's all corruption. It's all story behind story, cover beyond cover, things that we hate to see. So just like what we do, when you see pollution, what do we do? We try to go back. We try to convert. We try to change it. So we try to make the stream clean again. And how do we do that? We go to the cattle farm and we tell them, maybe you don't pollute the water. We go to the factory and we tell them, maybe you don't pollute the water. So the people downstream will get the original clean water, like what the politics is supposed to be, uniting people collectively to face the challenges, not to be polluting the people, not to be polluting the society. But when it comes a time when you realize there were so many sources, there are so many things entering into, into the stream and polluting this faster than you can try to unpollute the water. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to just give up? No, you don't give up, but you go right at the source. And that's what this is about. Abstain from politics, involvement in politics means all the politics that we are seeing right now is at midstream or downstream. But Master goes right to the heart of it because she knew we would be trapped in all the senseless and meaningless discussion that's back and forth. Which one is right? You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. And people are fighting over ideology, over what is right. She went back to the source and think about what we should be doing now. Instead of fighting which party should be in power, she goes right straight to the source. The source of how all these factories and cattle farms are polluting this stream. She goes to the source of the pollution, which is what? Which is what? Which is to purify our mind, which is to harmonize the society. And how does she do that? Is to bring the ideology that shows, that, that expose the kindness and love that we have. So no. Master didn't want us to sit on the fence. But instead of going into politics, she wants us to actively to show this compassion, to actively show this love that we have in us. So all those other people that's already polluting this river can see that love and stop polluting. That's what she's actively doing. Instead of participating that tug of war that is not going to get to any conclusion, so what if this party wins? Does that mean there's no problem? So what if that party wins? Does that mean that that party will not lose one day and then give rise to the other party? But she's focusing on the real tug of war that's in the human nature. To the tug of war between good and evil, not in the politics, but in our society and in our human mind. That's why Jinghua Renxin is always and will always be the number one goal in Master's vision in Siji. That's what we're doing. So don't think that just by abstaining from politics that we are sitting on the fence and doing nothing. No, sorry, we are not. We are doing everything we can 
so then we can bring out that compassion. So when everybody has that very base foundation, when we raise that foundation higher up, then all these other things will be resolved. She goes, Master goes right straight to the source to resolve the problem. So if anybody tells you that Siji is very non-active in politics, it's true because we know we're not playing this game, but we're playing the game. We're playing the game to go straight to the core of the problem, and that's our affliction. So let's remove that affliction, and hopefully one day we will be able to, the, then the, the problem of politics will be resolved on its own. And that's master's grand plan. And we are all part of the grand plan. The grand plan is, let's try to purify the minds and hearts of everyone. And eventually everything else will clear on its own. And that's the grand plan. So I hope for those of you that are thinking about involving in politics, because that's the, that's the best way to go about things. Well, if that's what you really feel, then please, you know, always keep master teaching at heart. I'm not going to stop you. I will tell you that that's not the best way, but if you're going to do it, that's your calling, you know, the, you know, best wishes to you. But for those of you that are thinking, are we doing nothing and allowing evil to happen? No, we're not. And that is why we're being a volunteer. That is why we're always helping those in need. And we're always sharing these stories with other people so then their compassion can show up their compassion can show as well. So that's my sharing for today. I'm sorry to go over, over time because this politi politics topic is something that's very um, heated. Um, and I hope that instead of jumping into something that's heated, instead of that, let's think about the purity at the origin. The origin of the politics, it was clean. It was clear, just like all of us. But what we should be thinking about is we are not doing nothing and sitting on the fences. No, we're not. This was actually, we're doing everything we can to go at the source, to, to try to stop the problem at the source of it all. So thank you, and that's my sharing for today. And today we're going to have sharing for a couple of centers. So uh, sister, please take over. Thank you. And Brother Joe for such wonderful sharing. We let uh, Sister Irene from Chira share first. Uh, hi, good morning, Brother Joe. Shifu and uh, brothers and sisters. Um, okay, uh, I'd like to share that recently um, uh, I, out of affinity, like things happen and I, I managed to go back to Hualien. Uh, actually, it has always been uh, my wish, uh, my aspiration. Uh, since I know Tati that uh, I wish to go back always. And uh, it seems the universe hear me. And uh, as we were planning uh, when to go back, trying to find volunteers when we can go back to abroad, suddenly I leave the goons from English group that uh, we have a trip back to abroad in April. And uh, Initially, I just planned to stay for five days because I tried to uh, actually uh, talk to two volunteers uh, to see whether they can extend stay or not. But uh, I thought Ying Yuan is such that uh, 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 the sisters cannot apply leave. Uh, so I decided to just stick to the original plan of just five days. But uh, what I want to share is, <laughs> out of me hearing wrongly, there was, uh, I think about 24th of March, I hear wrongly um, Brother Joe sharing that uh, Master is, actually this is what I hear wrongly. I, I heard that uh, Master couldn't come out to give Xun Fa Xiang uh, daily, it's only two days a week. That saddens me a lot. And uh, when I go back home that day, I feel very, very uncomfortable. And uh, every time I think of it, my tears actually uh, keep uh, coming down from my eyes. Um, and I make the immediate uh, decision, although alone, I decide to extend my stay at airport. Um, the reason I do it is um, I just want to be nearer to master 
and going back to our Jing Si home. So, um, what I want to actually say is, uh, we at Chirji, we treasure Master very much. So, um, we must seize the moment. Master is here with us. We must really treasure. We may, we may not be able to go back so often because we are from Malaysia. We can't see Master in person uh, that easily as compared to our Taiwan brothers and sisters. But uh, the least we could do is to be um, diligent in doing what uh, Master hope. Uh, for us to do that master cares so much about our wisdom life she master has repeatedly said so that um, she used up all her energy um, just to just to prepare the dharma teaching to us because she cares about uh, us her disciples uh, wisdom life so i really hope and um, appeal here to everyone. Um, the least we could do for Master is to come out every day, if possible, to Master's life Xin Fa Xiang. That's the only. That's the one way we can um, to show our gratitude to Master. And uh, if we really can't come out every day, um, of course we can still turn to Ta'a TV to see the recording and uh, also on this platform, on our Saturday platform um, this is where Brother Joe and team will be uh, helping us to summarize Master's teaching for the one week and guide us this is the platform I learned a lot also so, I don't think this platform is just meant for English-speaking group. Um, it originally is, but the way I look at it, if there are uh, volunteers who can't come out daily for whatever reason, um, the least they can do also is to try to make time for this Saturday session, which is just one hour. Um, come and try. Um, we have here from Chinese group volunteers who find it uh, very useful with the PPT in world language. So uh, I just hope everybody treasure uh, Master. You know, um, it is uh, difficult to be born as human body and it is even more difficult that we can hear Dharma. Um, and right now, here in Turkey, we have a great master. So, my personal opinion is I will seize the moment. I've, I count myself uh, lucky that probably I have some affinity last time and I managed to meet master at my later age now and uh, I wouldn't want to give up any chance and I'm going to listen every day. And listening from home and listening as compared to listening at center, there is actually difference. Just like when I go back to a board, when I can see master, when I can see her walking and hearing her expound at the Sutra Hall, it is really a different feeling. Um, so we must seize every moment. And uh, another thing is the Lai Bu Ji. Actually, uh, recently in Chinese New Year, this Chinese New Year, both me and my husband actually fall sick from first day of Chinese New Year. We see doctor until 15th of Chinese New Year. And uh, both of us are actually quite serious. My husband was actually hospitalized on second day of Chinese New Year. And under quarantine, so um, he got he got an influenza A infection, and this shows that um, he actually tell me after um, he left the hospital, he actually felt um, 
he couldn't make it when he is in the hospital. Um, this shows how life uh, can be so fragile. Just one sickness and one virus attack, we can we, we will not know whether we can make it or not. And as for me myself, um, I think I get some of his virus, but the doctor didn't give me the viral medicine. Um, but uh, I was getting better, and uh, suddenly I I took a wrong medicine. I was allergic, and I couldn't breathe that night. It was like very difficult, and I also feel I, I can just lose the breath, and uh, that's it. So the Laiputi doesn't mean, um, uh, in my own context, it doesn't mean we are referring to a master uh, at the elderly age now. It can be happen to any one of us. So um, this is the moment. Now we have the time, the chance at 30 to really know um, we have such a great master who diligently, um, so hardworking, expound Dharma to us daily. So we please seize the moment. And like right now, we cannot take things for granted. These few days, Master also um, uh, uh, couldn't come out to give us live session. But uh, watching the recorded WAD is equally good. Uh, I I also vow that um, I will come present to to hear the sharing of the recorded WAD uh, until Master come out uh, and uh, share with us her live session again. So Master, please take care of yourself. I wish you far ti an kang chang chu shi jie ba lung chang zuan. Master, we are waiting for you. We are waiting for you, Master. Your disciples are waiting for you. Thank you. That's all my sharing. Okay, uh, Sister Irene, thank you so much uh, for, for that um, heartfelt sharing. Um, I, I feel you too. And I'm, on the one hand, I'm so happy. Um, I'm so happy that you are able to... Um, I didn't. I didn't know that you got um, you and your husband both got seriously ill at Chinese New Year. I just remember seeing you in April, and had I known that, uh, it, it would make all the difference too. To know that you had um, just suffered such uh, such such illness and still be able to make you stronger. And thank you for for sharing that with us. Uh, just like what we what we talked about today. A lot of these things, if you don't feel it yourself, other people can tell you to cherish the moment, you know, and they can write a book about grabbing on, grasping every moment and cherishing every second. They can write many, many, many books about it and you can read all of them. But if you don't feel the time is running out on your own, having your own experience, then indeed it would just all be words. So the more important thing is, you know, to really cherish the moment. But I would like to share, I would like to share with Sister Irene that, um, yes, we all want Master to, to get healthy soon and fati and kang. Um, and, and I think we all definitely agree with that. And then you said that, Master, your disciples are waiting for you. And I, here I am, I'll be telling you, well, let's not wait because it's, it's Master that's waiting for us. Um, the fact that uh, she can't, um, preach right now or give the mo morning talk right now uh, doesn't mean that we are waiting for her. In fact, it is right now that we need to show what we are doing and also to show the things that we are working on, okay? So it's not that we are waiting for master. This is the time that we need to do to play catch up. So, and I, I believe, Sister Irene, I know what you mean. And I know you're not waiting. You are continually continuously, actively cherishing every moment. So I know you're not waiting. You're just sort of saying, we're waiting for Master to come back online. But in fact, we are not holding on. We are not halting our steps. We are continuing to go forward and learning and also cultivating and also transcending the things that we have to learn. So once again, thank you, Sister Irene. 
Thank you for being with us uh, on this journey, and thank you for always uh, being part of us and giving such an uplift story about about how you can feel that the time is running out. And thank you for giving us that story. Thank you, thank you, Sister Irene. So, brother Joe, Sister Irene, brother Yong, for lots of heartfelt and wisdom sharing. Thank you, Pusa, for your presence today. Hope that each of us could sustain the Dharma joy and take in another piece of masters and fall in love to our life. Let us please make three vows to the Buddha and Master Sun Yen as we depart to apply these teachings in our daily lives. Let us pay our respects to our teachers of life, universal truth. First vow. Second vow. Third vow. Gaan everyone and hope to see all of you tomorrow, uh, next Saturday. Gaan. And let's continue our daily Xin Pa Xiang. Jiayou. 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 Okay, bye bye. See you all next week. Bye bye.